In 1821, the Latin American wars of independence had been raging for over a decade, and the First Nations were beginning to break away from their old empires. Mexico won its independence in September of 1821, and its first attempt at nationhood would be as an empire. Just south of Mexico was Central America, which was also newly independent. Under the Spanish Empire, all of Mexico and Central America had been one political entity, the Viceroyalty of New Spain. However, Central America had been its own administrative area, governed separately from Mexico. Now, with both regions newly independent, the Mexican Empire wished to expand its territory and annexed Central America. However, the Mexican Empire was short-lived. Within two years, the first emperor, Augustin de Itabide, had resigned and gone into exile in Europe. In 1823, the empire collapsed and Central America broke off from Mexico. It then formed its own state, the Federal Republic of Central America. The Federal Republic was very decentralized and allowed its provinces to be largely self-governing. The central government in Guatemala City had very little real power. In December of 1824, the last forces loyal to Spain were finally defeated at the Battle of Ayacucho. It was undecided what would happen to the mountainous region between Peru and Argentina. Would it join one of those two nations or would it strike out on its own? It was decided that it would become its own nation named Bolivia after Simón Bolívar. In the south, there was uncertainty over what should happen to the area known as Banda Oriental, modern-day Uruguay. In 1824, it had been annexed by Brazil, which aggravated their new neighbor, Argentina. In 1825, Argentina declared that the Banda Oriental was theirs and that meant war with Brazil. The Brazilian Navy blockaded Buenos Aires and was able to win the ensuing naval war. On land, the war became a stalemate with the forces of Argentina unable to capture major cities. At the same time in Brazil, the war became increasingly unpopular. It was in fact the United Kingdom that would eventually press for the war to end as it was hampering its trade with Buenos Aires. In the Treaty of Montevideo in 1828, Argentina and Brazil both acknowledged the independence of Uruguay. At the top of South America, the modern countries, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador and Panama were all part of a single large state, Gran Colombia. The independence of those countries had been won in 1822, primarily by the revolutionary Simón Bolívar. It had been Bolívar's dream that they be united into a single powerful nation. However, within a few years, political disagreements would begin to tear Gran Colombia apart. Bolivar was president and was trying to make Gran Colombia a centralized state with power held by the central government. In opposition to him were his vice president, Francisco de Santander, and his former general, Jose Antonio Pais. They wanted Gran Colombia to be a decentralized federation, much like the United States of America. In 1826, Pius fomented an uprising which Bolivar was only just able to quell. Fearing that the situation was getting out of hand, Bolivar gave himself dictatorial powers and abolished the vice presidency, throwing Santander out of government. That led to an assassination attempt on Bolivar, which only just failed. Despite Bolivar's measures, Gran Colombia continued to fall apart. In May of 1830, Venezuela declared independence with Pius as its first president. Four months later, Ecuador followed suit. Then, in December, Bolivar himself died, and along with him, his dream of Gran Colombia. As Gran Colombia had splintered, in the north, Mexico was also struggling to hold on to its territory, particularly the region of Texas. When Mexico won its independence, Texas was very sparsely populated, with fewer than 4,000 residents. To help develop the territory, Mexico had invited citizens from the United States to settle it. However, that meant that many of the people who lived in Texas had little loyalty to Mexico. Tensions between the settlers and Mexico quickly arose. In 1830, the Mexican government banned further immigration from the United States and abolished slavery. That was not welcome to the Texans, many of whom were slaveholders. Tensions escalated over the next few years, and in 1835, hostilities broke out. The Mexican government demanded that the Texans return a cannon that had been lent to them. The Texans responded by flying a flag with a picture of a cannon and the words, come and take it. The Texan revolution had started. Over the next six months, the Mexican government would prove unable to suppress the uprising. And in 1836, the Republic of Texas was declared. Mexico had lost even more of its territory. 
By that time, Central America was still on paper the Federal Republic of Central America. However, in practice, the various provinces were almost totally self-governing. The central government in Guatemala had very little real power. The state was also weakened by division over what should be the role of the church in society. In 1838, the provinces declared their independence from the Federal Republic, giving rise to the modern states of Costa Rica, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Honduras and Guatemala. North of them, Mexico continued to be unstable and weak. It had been unable to reconquer Texas, even though it didn't recognize its independence. Many of those that lived in Texas were originally from the United States and wanted Texas to join the Union. In the United States itself, many had long been in favor of incorporating Texas. Eventually, the United States Congress voted to annex Texas, which immediately triggered war with Mexico. The United States very quickly took California and pushed south into the Mexican heartland. The United States Navy was significantly more powerful than Mexico's, giving it supremacy at sea. After an amphibious landing, the US was able to take Mexico City in September of 1847 and would occupy it for a year. In the ensuing Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, Mexico was forced to give up claim to roughly half of its land. Mexico would lose even more of its territory five years later when American businessmen wanted to build a railway from the south to the Pacific. Roughly one-third of modern-day Arizona was purchased from Mexico for the sum of $10 million. That purchase was the last major modification to Mexico's borders. While Uruguay's independence had been assured by the Cisplatine War of the 1820s, it was still a point of contention for the surrounding powers. For a decade, the country had been afflicted by civil war between the two major political parties, the Blancos and the Colorados. This conflict also involved the other nations of the area. Paraguay supported the Blancos, while Argentina and Brazil supported the Colorados. In 1864, when the Blanco party was in power, the Colorado party rebelled. Brazil supported the rebellion and claiming that Brazilian citizens were being persecuted, they declared war on Uruguay. They destroyed the Uruguayan navy and launched a land invasion. Paraguay was allied with the Blanco government of Uruguay and declared war on Brazil. However, Paraguay didn't share a border with Uruguay and so getting forces there would be extremely difficult. The only option was to march troops through Argentinian territory. Paraguay requested permission for the troop movement, but the Argentine government refused to grant it. Despite that, Paraguay marched its army through Argentina, creating a new enemy for itself. Then Montevideo was captured by the Brazilian army and the Blanco government was toppled and sent into exile. Uruguay, now controlled by the Colorado Party, allied with Argentina and Brazil, giving rise to the Triple Alliance. Outnumbered, Paraguay stood little chance against the three nations who invaded and occupied the country. In the ensuing peace, it lost more than a third of its territory. 1879 would see the outbreak of one of the most consequential Latin American wars, the War of the Pacific. It broke out over the strategically important resource sodium nitrate, which was used as fertilizer and to make explosives. The sodium nitrate was located in Bolivia, but the Bolivian government had allowed Chile to mine it if it paid a tax. In 1879, Bolivia increased the tax rate and so Chilean troops occupied the nitrate-rich region of Antofagasta. This meant war, not just between Chile and Bolivia, but also Peru, which was treaty bound to come to Bolivia's aid. Chile quickly took the initiative and destroyed the bulk of the Peruvian fleet. After taking control of the seas, it made several amphibious landings and occupied Lima. In the ensuing negotiation, Chile gained significant territory in its north from Bolivia and Peru. Most significantly, Bolivia lost access to the sea and became landlocked, a disaster for the country. As that war was raging, Argentina was able to take advantage of Chile being distracted and invaded Patagonia, the very south of South America. Patagonia had never been fully conquered by the Spanish Empire and was home to 60,000 indigenous people. An army led by Julio Argentino Roca invaded Patagonia and subjugated the local people. Chile, busy fighting Peru and Bolivia, was in no position to dispute the occupation and it recognized the modern border in 1881. The start of the 20th century would see yet another region break off of Colombia, Panama. Panama had joined Gran Colombia in 1821, and even when Venezuela and Ecuador had become independent, Panama had remained. However, the region had remained rebellious throughout the 1800s with frequent revolts. 
In 1840, it had become independent for a year before rejoining Colombia. In 1885, Panamanian rebels burned down the city of Colón and the rebellion was only put down with the help of the United States military. Colombia itself was hugely unstable in the 1800s with seven civil wars. In 1899, an eighth civil war would break out, which Panamanian separatists used an opportunity to advocate for independence. Ultimately, it would be the United States that would help them achieve it. The United States desperately wanted to build a canal in Panama since it would allow them to trade between their east and west by sea. The Colombian government had proven uncooperative and so the Panama rebels offered to permit the USA to build the canal if the USA would support their independence. In 1903, Panama declared independence and the US sent its navy to prevent it being retaken by Colombia. Colombia recognized the independence of Panama six years later. As that war was happening, Bolivia and Brazil engaged in a border dispute over the region of Acre. Acre was technically part of Bolivia, but had been ignored due to its apparent lack of commercial value. However, when the price of rubber rose significantly in the late 1800s, thousands of Brazilian settlers went to exploit the rubber trees. When the Bolivian government tried to tax the settlers, they rebelled and tried to declare independence. The dispute escalated into a war between Brazil and Bolivia, and after four years of fighting, Brazil was able to annex the territory. Confident after their victory, Brazil then advanced into Peru and claimed territory there. Peru was still weak after its defeat in the War of the Pacific and so was forced to accept Brazil's demands. The current border was agreed in the 1909 Treaty of Velada Rio Branco. By the 1920s, almost all of the borders of Latin America were settled. There were a few small exceptions though. Bolivia and Paraguay had conflicting claims over the Chaco region. The value of the area increased significantly after the discovery of oil. Bolivia also wanted the region as it would give it access to the Paraguay River. Since the War of the Pacific, Bolivia had been landlocked and so access to the Paraguay River would go some way towards helping its trade. After decades of gradually rising tensions and skirmishes, war broke out in 1932. Both countries made enormous sacrifices for the war effort, with their soldiers fighting in an extremely harsh and arid climate. After three years of fighting, Paraguay had managed to seize three quarters of the disputed lands. In the ensuing treaty, the majority of the Chaco region was awarded to Paraguay. The Chaco War was the last major border war in Latin America. Ecuador and Peru continued to have conflicts over their borders into the 1990s. The border was finally agreed by both nations in 1999. That covers all of the major Latin American nations, but a few small states remain to be accounted for. At the top of South America, French Guiana was colonized by France in the 1500s and remains an overseas territory. It is the largest part of the European Union, not in Europe. Suriname was a Dutch colony, but won its independence in 1975. It is the smallest sovereign state in South America. Guyana was a British colony that became independent in 1966. It still has border disputes with both Venezuela and Suriname. Venezuela claims a large part of the west of the country. Belize was also a British colony that won its independence in 1981. Guatemala doesn't recognize Belize and claims the land as its own. The dispute is currently being litigated in the International Court of Justice. Cuba won its independence in 1898, and despite various occupations by the United States, its borders have been stable. Finally, the island of Hispaniola is divided between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. This split is due to Haiti having been colonized by France, while the Dominican Republic was colonized by Spain. Haiti was the first to win its independence in 1804. The Dominican Republic broke away from Spain shortly after in 1822 and merged with Haiti to become one country. For a time, all of the island of Hispaniola was one united nation. Eventually, the Dominicans came to resent the Union and in 1844 they declared independence. Haiti tried repeatedly to reconquer the Dominicans, but failed. The current border between the two countries was finally agreed in 1929. Today, Latin America is made up of 21 countries and is home to 630 million people. Fortunately, after centuries of disputes, the borders that make up Latin America are now largely agreed upon.